one of my favorite meetings of anybody I was Julio. I met him like <clears throat> literally on like a Wednesday. I just moved to New York. I'm like, oh, fucking what's up? How you doing? We go down and we end up being in the same. This like Ponzi scheme comedy festival. Comedy festival. It was, down it was rigged. It was rigged. It was rigged. It was so bad. It was horrible. <laughs> it was actually rigged. It's in a room that holds a thousand people. There's about 12 people there. And he rolls in in a bathing suit and <laughs> flip flops. He thought we were performing on the beach. So he's like, I thought it was a bit. Like, I thought he was like, oh, like, I'm really going to get the, some extra laughs. I'm the Sandy comic. Dude, I was immediately eliminated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Dude. I didn't get past the first round. Welcome back to Oops the Podcast. All right, lots to unpack here. I got something for you. Please. Julio, Julio, I don't know where you came up with that. Yeah. Dude, this guy was a huge turkey. What is this, Japan? Which is yeah. one of the reasons why I hadn't told you about it. No, and I also just assumed you were saving it for the pod if you were going to tell me. Yeah, yeah. Which, of course you were. Oh, but. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Oops! The Podcast. I am here. I'm Francis Ellis, joined as ever by my co-host, Julio Gallarotti. What's happening? As well as <laughs> some wonderful guests today. We have... The two hosts of Are You Garbage, the breakout <laughs> ast astronomically successful to the moon uh, podcast, Are You Garbage? It's Kevin and Foley, uh, up, Kippy and Foley as they're known. Thanks for having us. Uh, love to see you guys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having us, man. This is great. It's Very the exciting. place I've ever been in in my life. Oh, <laughs> I'm stealing you. something when I leave, uh. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> it might be that dog, because I think I'm in love with him. Yeah. Look at him. Uh, Foley is looking uh, svelte. We're tuning it up, baby. We're yeah, getting, good we're getting hair it in there. Good hair lost do. 25 pounds. 22, 22 and, and a half. half. 22 and a half. <laughs> 22 and a half. And when did this start? Uh, about eight years ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's got a knack for sugar. What can I say? Is, no. that your, is that your vice? Sugar? I mean, I have multiple vices. Is it more You don't get that big liking <laughs> sugar, is all right? It treats or is it, you know, cheesy stuff? That's a great question. Um, I like it all. Start with the cheesy, savory stuff, and then usually end up with the with the sweets. Yeah. And the sweets has a couple components to it too. A gentleman has his chocolates, his peanut butter, all that kind of stuff first. <laughs> then the final, the dessert, right. dessert is it's fruity crazy. candy. You mean your amuse bouche? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something to clean the palate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Only a monster <laughs> a of would go fruity candy into chocolate. Oh yeah, you're a yeah. psycho. It's like beer before liquor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, real That's rookie right. shit. Yeah. yeah. Rookie yeah. moves. Yeah. A lot of vices. Mm. A lot of emotional eating, all that kind of stuff. But we're working through things and. Yeah, uh, well. Yeah, they Kippy put me on a on a tight program. So this is a funny. The, I they were sort of uh, teasing this incentive sure. program they've created, and it seems <laughs> knowing the things that you guys have been doing, I've been very impressed with your creativity when it comes to Thank money you. related activities. Thank you. It's we'll, a stupidity. We'll I would dive call it, more into sure. that, but yeah, yeah we're not playing so, for a set of steak knives here. We got, <laughs> we got hard cold cash on the table. So tell us about the fat. Uh, hey, so it started. We were system. in L.A. We, you know. The word success is very new for us. We were fucking nobodies for like 10 years in the city. And now it's like kind of happening quickly. So we're like, we're going out to LA for our first, you know, leg of, our, for the first time of like, are you garbage? We're going to, you can only go to LA once. So I rented this Doing fucking. Doing the improv, La Jolla, San cool, Fran. Cool. I got 300 bucks on my checking account. We're looking pretty good. Yeah. So we're like, <laughs> he's, somehow we start making money and he's nice. more poor than he was previously. It's insane, <laughs> dude. Up. It's proper insane. I'll tell you what, Paris is beautiful this time of year, though. Yeah. I'll tell you yeah, that. He's also been to Paris, Hawaii, Miami. He just goes on vacation. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you, you got to pay. Yeah, what you what should, should also do. pay your taxes first. I borrowed, we were making money and I borrowed 10 grand off Navy Federal to go to Hawaii because I wanted to really He's taking loans out. out to go on vacation. <laughs> it is not financially sound. Were you in the Navy? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to be? I thought you had to be somebody in, in the Navy. Oh, See, like yeah, my dad, my dad was in the Navy. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. So they opened up a checking, they opened up a savings account for me when I was like five years old, put five dollars in it, and it remained that way until about two weeks ago. Yeah. Or there's a couple of bucks in there. Sick. Uh -huh. Got it. So yeah, Got so that those are my that's my that's my banking institution. Nice. Dude, Navy Federal Credit Union saved my life, actually. Really? I'll tell you why. I did a voiceover well, I was on a commercial. Cargo ship. Let me <laughs> tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, seals came in. Yeah, literally. Got hemmed up in the Caribbean. Dude, I did a radio commercial for Navy Federal Credit Union. Really? Where I'm like responding to a guy talking about his car, and I'm literally just like, oh, wow. Nice. Just like literally, like the, the simplest shit. Uh -huh. And every time I was about to be so poor that I was going to need that to like start turning tricks in an alley, 
I would just receive a direct deposit from Navy Federal Credit Union Love for that. like three and a half years. Ooh. Wait, they paid yeah. you directly? There wasn't like an ad no, no. agency? No, no. My agent, they, it went through my agency and the direct That's deposit, but then I'd find out what it was from. A and Black it was Hawk from, shows yeah, up, they were, yeah. drops a bag of money. No, sir. <laughs> exactly. But anyway, <laughs> so I really hold them yeah, close to my heart. Yeah, shout out to Navy Federal. I mean, tell you, they're like a, they're like a drunk aunt at Christmas, man. They hand out those loans like it's nobody's business. I <laughs> love it. Uh, I'm in bed no with an idiot. No collateral, no <laughs> nothing. Need 10 Gs to fucking look cool in a while. Oh, here you go. I did. Nice. I love it. Yeah. So you're you're out in LA. So we go. So I go. I'm like I, in my head. You know. I'm like, you only can do LA for your first time once, right? You are going. We're going to Hollywood. So I rent like a fucking crazy uh, Airbnb. Nice. It's a, it's in the hills. Which we were going to record at, too. We were going to have Andrew Santino come over. And we were having a bunch of guests come nice. over. So we are going to set up a studio oh. in there, you know, similar to this. I'm like, we have space. We didn't want to do the hotels. And we had a big pool, hot tub, fucking, like, Sick. you know. Nas X, the whole nine. Years. It was. Uh, <laughs> was he there? No. What does that mean? He's just playing on the radio? <laughs> we blew to a get little him there. Nas X song. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's nice. I thought I saw him on Melrose. You may have. <laughs> so. We show up, we get there. The guy's a real dickhead, and I didn't realize. Lil Nas X. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's a sweetheart. What are we Not as cool as he looks. <laughs> the, the Airbnb guy. The Airbnb guy. Uh, yeah. Because on the way out there, uh, it's also like I rented like this like huge black Escalade for us to travel. Like I'm like we're like really doing. You know what I mean? Nice. It's like it's like first season entourage type. Yeah. Stuff. But this guy's exactly what you would think. He's 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 probably in like his fifth, late fifties, sixties. I think it was probably his mother's house. He probably didn't do that well. He's using that to like pay taxes and do this and do that. Mm -hmm. He's got the plastic surgery. You look like I would feel if you had that house. He looked like a walleye walking around. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like that. <laughs> he was and it, just a dick. If you had that house and could afford it, you probably wouldn't be Airbnb in yeah. it out. I presume. You I know what I mean? Like hopefully. I doubt like, you know, mm -hmm. successful people aren't like, yeah, have strangers come live in my house. It right. need a Regularly. renovation too. The fixtures weren't that great. There was no Viking, none of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Not like this classy joint we're in right now. <laughs> no pogan pole. Nah. Like None of that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Uh, so we get there, the rule, and the guy's like, the guy's a real dickhead. We walk in, he's like, shoes off, and meet, like, he greets you there, and he's like, shoes off. That's one big rule. So he's like, there's no sleeping on the couch. There's no this. There's no smoking on the property. No glass by the pool. Like, all this Sleep crazy on the shit. couch, $1,000 fine. That, yeah, $1,000 fine if you sleep on the no couch. No glass by the pool, $500 fine. What yeah. the fuck? Plus, he's got ring cams set up everywhere. Is he a super host? I what don't know. We were talking about the ring cam thing. It's like we? the blue check mark of Airbnb. I, I think he was. Check. Yeah, he was. I can check. Get, fuck, check. We had zero leverage. That sucks. And yeah. also, like, but I went in, like, I used to Airbnb my place out when I would go on the road. I would Airbnb it out for the weekend to, like, you know, cover money in New York. So I'm like, hey, man, like, host to host. We'll treat it like how I want my place to be treated, like everything. And I was, he's like, I've had to throw people out, this whole thing. And he was kind of cool. Like, he was cooler in person than he seemed on the paper. I'm right. like, this That's is always deterring is, parties yeah. and shit like that. He's like, I've had people have parties at 4 a.m. And he's like, I'll text them. Like, what are you doing? And then I'll just show up. And then we kick them out. I'm like, yeah, man, you're not going to have that from us. So we just whatever, assumed whatever. all this bullshit was a smoke screen to keep that, you know, from yeah. happening. And it's you also like, I mean? we weren't planning anything crazy. Totally. It was like, there was a couple other friends we had out there. I'm like, we, they might come over, like, swim in the pool during the was day. Was that okay? No, so I text no. him the next day because we have uh, Andrew Santino book. The vibe we got from him was like, we should ask if we can have somebody come over because we don't want him rolling in while Santino's there and make us look like bozos. Yeah, I'm like, I don't yeah. want to be mid-episode in the living room and he walks in. Knocking like, on the window. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Yeah, like, <laughs> Who's that? Like Mr. Roper. Yeah. If I may, Please. really quick. This is your podcast. I didn't. We could have we, we used I you out used there, you. by the way. I was trying to do my best fucking Francis, you. by yeah. the way. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that Airbnb hosts ha were allowed to be this involved in the it, stay it of gets, their it guests. It gets crazy. Yeah. Because to me, it's almost like you hand them the keys. You hope they follow the house rules. If You're they don't, the dice. you settle up at the end yeah, with the insurance policy, with, with the fines, whatever. Fine all whatever. That. That's honestly what I thought. And I'm it's like, not a homestay. No, yeah. It's, I'm like, you're right. not upstairs. Right. Like, yeah. we got the house. Totally. So, uh, um, so I text him. I'm like, hey, man, I don't want to have fucking, I don't want to have people over without, like, he, this guy's too shifty. So I text him. I'm like, hey, man, uh, my cousin, I even said my cousin. I'm like, my cousin's uh, ended up being in town. Can, uh, I was going to have him over for lunch tomorrow. I know you have the policy of no guests. So, like, I wanted to, you know, he'd be over from noon at noon for lunch. 
and he texts me back, call me. Call me immediately. Call me immediately. So I call oh, him God. up. He goes, he answers the phone. You didn't read the rules. I'm like, I read the rules, hence me quoting the rules in the text and asking for permission to not enforce this rule. Yeah, dickhead. So he goes, ah, I don't know. We're back and forth. So he goes, I guess, I guess that's okay. But right away, I'm like, I'm not fucking, this is, yeah. I'm not doing this. So he goes, I actually have to stop by the house if that's okay. I have to pick up some sort of tax document that's in the office. Yeah, he, ha he had the upstairs sealed Unacceptable. off. Unacceptable. So I go, His like, dead mother could have been upstairs. That's yeah. like, he, real psycho vibes. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Like big time. Yeah. Sitting in a chair. Yeah. So I go, <laughs> yeah. Hello, oh, miss. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> So he like fucking whatever. So we let him go to the place, the whole nine yards. We end up finding a studio to record it. I'm like, I'm not fucking doing this. Uh, we do this. We have a show that night. We do the show. We go out. We come home. We're kind of like all fucked up. And he's like, I'm going to smoke. A c We've been walking to the street to smoke because I'm like, this guy is clearly a fucking lunatic. So we've been walking to the street to smoke. And. Uh, I didn't really. We were catching dirty looks smoking on the street. I'm like, man, these they're really fucking. Yeah, I was saying, how did people? They were looking. They at were me like mugging I was a us. Fucking dirt like, ball. I didn't realize we were in the hills. You're not allowed to smoke. You're not allowed to smoke and run your Francis. Loitering is also just frowned upon up there in general because there's just so many break-ins and shit. Because they're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so I, then we go out the next night and we're out drinking. We're at the comedy store. It's me, him, Josh Potter, a bunch of people, and I get a text. Kevin, you're not following the rules. And I'm like, Hi, what are you talking about? He goes, there's no smoking on the property. And I'm going, hey, man, we didn't smoke on the property. We've been walking to the street like to obey the rules. And now I'm like copy and pasting his rules. And I'm like, if you see section B, you know, oh, paragraph God, dude. Lawyer C, mode. blah, 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 this, that. And this whole time he's going, yeah, fuck this guy, man. What the <laughs> fuck's this guy's problem? This fucking asshole. <clears throat> fuck him. Fuck him. This guy's got a lot of nerve. I mean, do it. I have the. I just have, sold out the improv. You're fucking giving a shit. I mean, Take it's a 180 <laughs> seats. It's not like we sold out the Palladium. All right. <laughs> this guy moves a couple of tickets and he gets all fucking. I had tuna tartare for lunch. What are yeah, you doing? That's right. Navy uh, Federal Credit Union yeah, ain't going right, nowhere, yeah. dude. You called a captain. Make it two tuna tartars while we're at it. So we're going back and forth. And I'm like, now I'm being like, yo, fuck this guy, man. Like, I paid the money. We're not breaking the rules. Get the fuck out of him. He's like, there's no smoking on the street. I go, hey, man, I'm sorry. The rules didn't state that. I didn't know we couldn't smoke on the street. Because it's the hills that are worried about forest fires. I'm like, we won't do it from oh, here on out. That's why everyone was fucking mean money totally on the street. Kind of legit. Yeah. That yeah, makes go, sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah go, of makes course, sense. man. We didn't know that. We're from out of town. I don't yeah. know about this shit. So I go, of course, man, no sweat. You know, it won't happen again. You have my word. I apologize. And then he goes, no smoking on the property. I go, hey, man, like, fucking we did it. And then he just sends, I'm standing next to Foley, and he sent the, the Airbnb guest host just sends me this. No text, no nothing, just this picture. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking 400 pound topless Foley with a fucking heater in his mouth at 2 a.m. in the driveway. He snuck out. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> you can see Allegedly, him. Mr. Ellis. You can see him putting the fucking lighter back in his pocket. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. I saw that picture and loved it <laughs> and didn't even realize all the history. I behind didn't know it. that either. Yeah. yeah. yeah he so had a good. ring cam fucking behind us that he was watching us the whole weekend. Like, yeah. Like Jigsaw. And, and, and <laughs> what a, what a treat that they saved that story. Story so for our good. podcast. <laughs> exactly. I'm that, sure that was never this told is the first else. time that's been told. I think it's only been told maybe two or one or two other times. No, I've, I've, I tell the same story. Um, <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. That's awesome. So it's a whole thing. And then we end up getting kicked out. And the more I wake up, and they're like, the, guy, the Airbnb guy's like, you have to leave. I'm like, this is nuts, man. I'm like, they pay me. I'll pay the fine. He goes, he doesn't feel safe. Then he, he sent us another a, a picture. A third party showed up to tell you this? No, I'm sorry, by via message. Got it, got it. So, Airbnb took over. So and they didn't do shit. Mm. They start sending pictures of like people. We check our producer Toby, who also checked in with us, and they go. He goes, get this guy off the property. And I go, that's Toby. You met him yesterday. Like he's one of the registered guests. And he goes, I don't care. And whatever. And then they just fucking. He was looking us. for a reason. We rocked right into it. We got out of there. The fucking thing was back up on Airbnb like an hour after we were gone. We get a new place. I was looking for Airbnbs that night. Like I, we pulled out and I like have my phone and I'm looking and his place was already relisted wow. to stay at. So now I'm into the company for 5 g hods. They've been trying to get me to lose weight for a long time. Yeah, he didn't, we didn't get anything We get back. no money back. Nothing. That yeah. was $5,000? Yeah. Yeah. And they Airbnb. Well, that didn't... was. It, dep it was Ellis depends. would have put the system that was on four, track. We got to get another that. place that ended up costing us. I forget what that was. But you then. Gotta, you got to fight that. 
I tried. He goes, they, they said all refunds are, I go, this is insane. I've been a host for years. I've been using, I'm like, I've had nothing but, you know, five-star reviews. I like really went to the mattresses. And he goes, we've been all- coming here 30 years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sir, we've only been open three. And this is your first day. It's what are you egregious. talking about? Yeah. Uh, I'm a gold member. All refunds are up to the host, completely up to the host's discretion. Yeah. So, yeah. So I jammed this up. I'm into the company for 5Gs. They've been trying to get me to lose weight. So they said, listen. Also, hold on. Go ahead. So we get a new place, right? New place. We fucking double down. Pool, whole nine yards. They don't want to hear Put about this. What there. are you talking about? You do. We go out, right? The redemption story of H. Foley. Can't get right. He fucking, we're all out. He goes, I'm going to go home or he's all fucked up. We go out and get all fucked up. He goes, I'm going to. Tuna- <laughs> <laughs> I have a. I have a- we go to we go to this dive bar. I'm dragging out. a buffoon around the country with me. <laughs> I, I I put away about I don't know conservatively ten dirty martinis, and then <laughs> I find out, dude, we're in a dive bar. He's he goes, can I get a martini extra dirty? The guy's like, I the guy literally goes, I guess. Like I'll see if I have the stuff laying around. <laughs> then I found out the late night menu was still going on, and they had this tuner sandwich on there with a pumpernickel that looked really good. Yeah. So I ate that. <laughs> Dude, we're in a proper hole-in-the-wall dive bar. He's drinking a dirty martini and a tuna sandwich at, like, midnight. And I got, ranch all, I got ranch all over my shirt. And if you're out in L.A., you got to keep up appearances so you can't be walking around like a bozo. So I excused myself early from the soiree and went back to the new Airbnb. It's a padlock. I type it in. I go in. I lock the door. I go into my room. I put on the Mandalorian. I put my CPAP machine on. And I go night-night. And I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning to a ruckus Mm -hmm. disturbing my sleep. Fucking 4,000 missed calls, 4,000 messages. And I text them. I'm like, where the hell are you guys? He's leaving me voicemails. Where the fuck are you? Meanwhile, we're locked out of the house. So I have to get hotel rooms for me and Tom Cassidy at fucking, I don't know, 3.30 in the morning. Oh my on, I'm God. on hotel dude, and our phones are dying. We're, when we're did Tom each- Cassidy get involved in this? <laughs> he was there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he was there the whole time. He's a quiet guy. Yeah, he was. He is. Is Tommy he comes. Tommy comes with us. He opens up the show with this. So awesome. he was the one that came back to the to the Airbnb first at 1:30 and couldn't get in. Could because I didn't oh, hear yeah. anything. Mm. Well, CPAP machines work pretty good. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, it's like mm. Darth Vader. Oh, so not yeah. only did he get me kicked out of a five thousand dollar Airbnb, then next night he locked me out of the three thousand dollar Airbnb, <laughs> oh my God. which yeah. they got rooms at the shittiest hotel in Hollywood. If he would have done that to me, I would have been in the fucking dictator suite at the fucking. <laughs> yeah, four but this seasons. goes back to yeah. you don't have the money to pay me back, <laughs> so I would just be. I'm just... <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. good. So yeah, that's I'm excellent. in the company for a lot of money, a lot of cash. Uh-huh. That he, you know, he's not liquid. I got five I, grand, man. Let me let me clarify. Sure. <laughs> you mean his tab on the are you garbage <laughs> bill? So yeah, yeah so we is, there's like where it's a, where we have a company right. that pays the for expense everything. Expense account right. hard, right? Yeah. yeah the, so like cleaned up. We petty have cash. we bought we got the Airbnb for five thousand. Got booted out of that after a night or two, and then I, we have to spend three thousand dollars to get a new one. Mm-hmm. So it's like I shouldn't have to like that's coming out of. My, also, my share of the funds right. is him right. spending, you know, to, at, at this point, it's like 10 grand in fucking yeah. in, in, in lodging for over a week. <laughs> yeah. Lodging. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> totally fair. So, they've been trying to get me to lose weight. So, in order to like really put the screws in me, they put some cash on the table and said, either you pay the five grand back or we weigh you in right now. And every month we break it up into $1,200 payments. And every month you have to be five pounds lighter than you were the month before. That's clever. And if you are, so uh, he good. doesn't owe the this money. Back. I'll waive the payment. That's so really... I'm ultimately be pay- I'm paying him with my money to lose weight, which That's is an great. insane world this to be living. But I'm a... magnanimous. The Content. ultimate long investment. Shh. If he passes go. away, the podcast might not be as successful. Got, of course, <laughs> but I, I, got, would, I got Ian Finance nipping. But I would have I would have 100 percent of a smaller pie, which I would have. <laughs> <laughs> sober Ian Finance is circling your apartment oh, with his bike man. all night long. I have contingency. Yeah, I got him on. Papers. Send, send him me butcher boxes. For the every record, week. I spent a few days in L.A. with Ian Finance recently. I don't know how long no, his we life there as well. expectancy. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've got enough. I mean, maybe he's another just two years eating out of cigarettes at this point, <laughs> as far as I can tell. It doesn't even light them. It's em. a lot. I've surrounded myself with, uh, you know, not the healthiest people. But I'm a victim of my own success, as you know. You're, you're, <laughs> you're an in shape guy. I put it really hard for the first month. Dropped 22 pounds. He was supposed to come in five under, and he comes in under 22, yeah. then threw it into the neutral. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not really, but you know, you know how it's uh, almost metabolism like works. You could you could almost give him a a grace for the next month. No, that's, that's what I crazy. said. That's crazy. That's got to be worth two four hundred dollars. He continues to win in this. Agreed. He I, continues I'm to skate by and break the side. rules. This I'm is on Kippy's side. Yeah. No, I, so, I'm wait. paying him with my money to lose weight. This is insane. For the record, <laughs> yes, you do realize that each month, the night before you did your weigh in, mm-hmm. you could go into a sauna. I know. Wearing a fucking bag. I know. And Die make in weight. That sauna. I know. But you can also gain a lot of weight during that time. No, I know. I'm just Which saying. Which I didn't. I actually, I, I only, I only. I was Which only, I'm happy about. I was only 0.5. I, I was a half a pound lighter, but I could have put it back on. You could have easily. In style. Too. And yeah, I think though it needs to start fresh every month. And hopefully the way that you had this dispute with the landlord of the Airbnb, you know, in article two, section B, it's, sure. it's clearly stated it's, that thank you. five additional Still pounds bound. must be yeah, lost yeah, yeah, from yeah. the last, yeah. from the last way. You shot your load early. You know what I mean? You're yeah. the weird guy at the orgy, which I would have made it, but I went home. I went home to see my parents on, on Sunday for father's day. And they had one of them tomato pies there. You ever had one of those? It's no. a Philly thing. It's a cold pizza. Uh, huh. A couple pieces of that got me. Sounds nice. So what are you going to do? So, Twelve hundred bucks down a drain. Mm. You didn't make the weight. Nah. No, you failed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I missed so the bike. This is the second way. This is the second way. So right now you're net is it, is zero. It once a month. Once a month. Right. You made twelve hundred. So passed the first month, then failed month yeah. too. Failed month. So right now he's at net zero. But here's correct. Here's my question. Are you for the month? I mean, overall, three, I'm down about twenty. Does grand. he need yeah. to be down? <laughs> you throw the Hawaii vacation. Ten pounds. <laughs> Is if he had stayed on track? I th- we do we d- listen. These rules are. Do you understand you know, what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. I think yeah. that's what we said. You have to be ten down. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to be. It doesn't matter. It, I'm not gonna fuck up again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what it is. I'd have to uh, check the, the the meeting minutes, but I you believe that's what it is. Track. Yeah. yeah. So at the end of the four, it would be a total of twenty down. You're a month behind. You got to make that weight up and then lose another five on top. Yeah, no, yeah. I got it. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be ten pounds. But if down. he lost ten this month, he'd be good. I'd be good. Yeah, okay. yeah, he's got, got to. He has nine point five technically. Nine point five. Yeah. I'm fairly <laughs> confident that if I got weighed in right now, I would be, I would, I would have made the five pounds. No, but I also I pushed it back a week because I knew I wasn't going to hit. I it. also gave him a grace week on this. Let me ask you this. Because I'm a nice guy. I'm a real piece of shit. Uh, yeah. I don't honest know you guys are up on this. I get I get I get pegged as the mean one, which is insane. Uh, honest question. Go honest ahead. question. Let's say that I forced you to move in with me for a month. I don't, I don't get, think you'd have to force yeah, you, them you at me? all. I got, <laughs> my, got, his bags I got my stuff in the car. <laughs> <laughs> You're nuts. I thought you might and say you that. you don't uh, want to do the <laughs> Francis, do not do that. Because this looks like a fresh direct house. Yeah. I'm all about it. Let, let, it's actually a Hello Fresh house. Oh, yes. Yeah. Don't get oh, it fucking really? twisted. Yes. <laughs> Oop 16. Promo code, yeah, Oop 16. Yeah, we, like, we, love, uh, we love Hello Fresh. Uh, <laughs> Let's say that you move. I you forced you to move in. Do you upstairs by any chance? No. I forced you to move in with me for uh-huh. a month, right? And I had complete and utter control over what you ate and drank and sort of acted as your, like, personal trainer and all of that. How, for how long? One month. I, w- I would leave here and you would be 25 pounds heavy. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's gotten me fatter, dude. You, it, would, it would go the other way. Your, sure. your relationship would be a mess. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows what a dog would a be? A dog would be smoking. I would, be, I would yeah. gain weight. Yeah. <laughs> it would be like that. I'd be sitting in the corner eating a fucking ice cream uh, pie. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he'd I'd just get in your like, head eventually. Ah, my work is done. Hundred percent broken. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, that's Dude, good. I, like I've gotten. Riddler. I've put on probably twenty five pounds just like on the road. Dude, there's just around You're a big him. Fluctuator. I am. Uh, but around him, he, there's, he fluctuates. There's like more apps like around. Lane. There's more, <laughs> you know. Oh, I'm just gonna grab this at the re- There's more opportunities, yeah. and more food floating around in his universe. There right. just is. Yeah. But I will say this: all comedy aside, the urgency or the dirtbag in me to not want to give up the twelve hundred bucks has put like you know, you know, how, like if you don't study for a test and then the night before you cram it, it's put me in this cycle of like. Now I'm kind of in the zone of there is that sense of it's always the fourth quarter. Mm. It's always the bottom of the ninth. So it's kind of it's it's worked because I I don't see any issues moving forward. I really don't. 
Well, here, here's this. Plus, it takes a while for that shit to get out of your system. This is an so amazing excuses, exercise, crazy. and I'm glad we've talked about it this much <laughs> because uh, you people often look at famous Hollywood actors who have undergone massive body transformations. Christian Bale putting on tons of weight, losing tons of weight, and they say, well, yeah, I mean, if, if I had a studio paying me $7 million to make a movie, I could lose 65 pounds. And it's like, okay, it's not $6 million and $7 million. But it's still real money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. $1,200. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. you are not right. <laughs> it's not. It didn't work. <laughs> Give me Kevin Feige on the phone, all right? <laughs> not only did it not work, he came in yesterday. We recorded an episode where we did this. We call it Fat Court. And uh, this is season two because season one did not work either. Yeah. Dude, the first. The, but the reviews were through the roof. <laughs> Dude, in Fat Court season one, um, I was, we put him on and we're like, we're going to do weekly weigh-ins, right? And he fucking, we're like, all right, so how do you know, we check in after a week, thinking he's like at least kind of trying. We're like, what did you eat so far? What'd you have? Any fast food this week? This week? He was like, Wendy's, Burger, like he had did bat the cycle. He had hit all of them. And he goes, <laughs> I also went, I had some hot dogs. And we go, well, how many? And after a level of digging, we got to, he had 12 hot dogs. And Wait because, a second! Hold in on, one week? In one day? Because what? They only sell them. Was it a contest? <laughs> hey, Kobe, Oscar, relax. Will you? <laughs> He's dipping them in water. I yeah. got Joey so, chestnuts coming yeah. down the pipe. So it gets crazier. It, it, so the town he, that I grew up in has hold a place on, called. He goes, they only sell them. It's Abe's. They only. It's Abe's hot dogs. They only sell them in dozens. Me and also like chili dogs. Perfect chili dogs, <laughs> nonetheless. In perfect, in perfect podcasting form. Our producer just randomly calls up Abe's and was like, hey, do you only sell hot dogs in the by the dozen? And the guy goes, nah, man, you can buy one, two, three, four. <laughs> that kid was new. He didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> and he goes, historically, everybody it's buys customary. them. It's customary. They're it's good, though. You like, a, you like a hot dog? They're top shelf. Yeah, the best. yeah, I like a hot dog. I've never had 12. <laughs> he probably has only had 12 in his life. I've never had 12 <laughs> hot dogs in a day. Man, that is so. You just were throwing them back, and you didn't get full. That's the thing. I, I do get full, but I keep eating. It's weird. <laughs> I keep. I just keep eating because it's you know it's. Are you um, bored? Are you don't have the off switch? I think it's emotional. I think it's yeah. you know you're you're eating your feelings because well, over the last year, for some reason, when I would like overeat, I would like sometimes like tear up. Sometimes if I was thinking about something good or happy about something, or if I was sad about something. You ever see a fat guy sitting there crying, eating 12 hot dogs? It's a real, <laughs> this, it's a real tear jerk. I mean, I'm glad we got here because up till now, it's been all fun and games. But they're yeah. clearly, I mean, this is a, a poignant sort of takeaway sure. from, from, from all of 100%, this. 100%, yeah. And, and speaks to what everyone says and knows now, which is that, you know, people with weight issues are not just, it's not just laziness. It's not just, you know, uh, whatever. It, 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 there, there's, no, there's, no, there's a lot of layers to there's it. There's not a yeah, choice yeah. being made to be, be overweight. A lot of people don't want to, but it's, there's so much more at play. Yeah. I mean, yeah. sometimes it is. Like when that Popeye's chicken sandwich came out, there was, listen. Game over. Yeah, I was, go I was going for that no matter what. How <laughs> many did you, did you enjoy that? I enjoyed that, yes. And how many <laughs> did you go back and think like it's it's limited, it's only around for a like little like a hot time. set of Jordans or like, something? I have to get it, babies? As, have have to get it, it as much as I no, can. It's there, but I, I paid like, a guy to stay out overnight to wait in line for me. I'm you, kidding. Uh, <laughs> well, I, would, <laughs> I believe that. But, but yeah, he would that it. wouldn't have bothered me as much because that would mean like this is a novelty and I've got to try it's it. Sure. Special. But if it was like, you actually had anxiety about needing to have the food. That mm -hmm. would be telling to me. Yeah, there's definitely anxiety about it. There's de there was definitely some sort of... Specifically the Popeye's hot chicken sandwich? No, no, that's just... Because that would make <laughs> took me out think... a loan to get That it, would actually. make me think their marketing <laughs> campaign was working. Oh, their marketing that... campaign works. Buddy, you were going to get the chicken sandwich with or without the advertisement. No, but I will get say Get out of here. You had 12 hot dogs from a place no one's ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely going to get fucking the chicken sandwich. I will say this. This is crazy. He's got you in his web and you have no idea. No, I'm, I'm, you I'm, have I'm being no honest. Idea. I'm being honest. Um, I, am a, I am not a victim of advertising, but advertising really works on me. Like all yeah. those commercials growing up, the McDonald's, 
the soda commercials, this, that, the other thing. Like every time I eat uh, a Cool Ranch Dorito, I think of when Jay Leno did the commercials. Uh, I didn't he used know. to do exactly. the commercials. Yeah, commercials. he used to do the commercials, and he and he would eat the chips. And I still think about that. Mm. It's real, like nostalgic, uh, childhood connected, and all that stuff. Have you been heavy your whole life? Uh, as a kid, yes, and then in high school, um, sports cleared that away. Mm -hmm. But just because I was working out like a madman. What'd you play? I played football, wrestling, and lacrosse, yeah. and then played football and lacrosse in college. And then once that was over, and the only reason I did the exercise and, and worked really hard, it was for the team, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, so I didn't be the one letting anybody down. Once that was out of the picture, you know. We've the tapped into something off. here. Yeah. Well, this is exactly right. Julio's making, is, is, we've hit the nail on the head here. There's mm -hmm. your solution. Yeah. Uh, having others. I do have two years of eligibility loss. left. You <laughs> fucking get back on the grid on You, need, you have to do. play D2, though, dude. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to do you, it. You've done a version of it, but I would imagine that a financial incentive is not as powerful or compelling as creating a system whereby other people will be let down or fail. Well, that's why I'm doing it now. And listen, I, I'm, not, I'm not making an excuse. You know, I went really hard the first month with the 22 pounds. You know, I mean, personally, I'm like, I'm glad that I fucking kept it off and I'm in this routine and I know it's going to be good moving forward. It ain't the money. I don't give a shit. I'm, I'm a fucking idiot. I don't know. I don't even really know what five grand is. I'm doing this because I don't want to <laughs> let him down anymore. But this is my point. Like, here, here's a, hear me out. Sure. I what wish if, the door would ring with like five pieces said, right now. <laughs> <laughs> what if you said that if um, if Foley doesn't lose, you know, whatever, five pounds each month, then you have to grant um, like 500 Patreon subscribers free subscriptions, and that comes out of all of your money. We, we so have that, done like you don't care about him enough. It's yeah, not exactly. money. It's also I, so that first you, of all, at some point, it's his responsibility to lose the weight. I know. Like this, this, and like this is we've talked about this of like why like I got, I'm from the point of like you know I, I can only I can't do this. No, for I you. know. But yeah. so as, it's like I I'm, I'm this telling you guys I got it now. I'm telling <laughs> he's, you. He's, right. I'm not even fucking around. If That's, he, that should be his fucking slogan. He said it ten thousand times. He said it pre twelve hot dogs and then after twelve hot dogs he goes guys. Don't worry, I got it. <laughs> yeah. I was at the gym today. Okay, uh, I, you are, and hold on. I'm breaking his balls. He is doing fantastic. I'm super. I'm super proud. He's doing fantastic. Yeah. And we're off the road for July. That All right, hope. our next show is August 11th at uh, in Red Bank. Like Count that Basie plug. Theater. Seamless. Yeah, I'm there right August 10th with Lil Sass. Very nice. Where school. is that? We're doing the small room. We're where, doing the little theater there yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Where is this? Red Bank, New Red Jersey. Bank, New Jersey. Got it, got that's it. where Kevin I was missed her. That's where I was born. Really? really? Red Bank Regional oh, Hospital. Man. Lived there till I was four. Who yeah. are you? Mallrats. I swear you were made in a lab somewhere. <laughs> it's crazy well, we're the same is, species. Why is that so unusual? Because <laughs> uh, you grew up in Massachusetts or no, all over Maine. the place? In Maine? I grew there up you in go. Maine. Oh, even that. Look at that. But I lived <laughs> I knew that. in Maine my whole life. I, I, I was born in, in Jersey. You know? I thought you lived on the Upper West Side, too. I don't know what's going on. We didn't know what we were walking to up here. I thought we were getting whacked. <laughs> <laughs> What's what's Team amazing is even with the the w little weight you've lost, mm -hmm. you are. It I is love that. Very, by the way, <laughs> it's very what apparent how handsome you are. He's Thank a good looking. You got a Thank good you. head of hair on him. And, Thank you. And you would like if genetically, I'm supposed to be attractive. Yeah, I've just worked really hard not to be. <laughs> I don't have any hair. I'll do on everything my in my power to yeah. not let that happen. <laughs> now, where are those chicken sandwiches at? You've got a movie star nose and brow Thanks. and hairline. <laughs> I mean, am I wrong? He looks good. This good guy. Just four good-looking guys hanging out. <laughs> good-looking guys. Where's that Hello Fresh at? Yeah. Yes. No, but so we're off the road for the month. Um, I have a trainer. All right. Shout out to King Ferg. And I upped it from one day a week. I'm the other days a week. I do it by myself. Not I'm just not doing it one day a week. But since we're off the road, I'm gonna be with him three days a week. There you go. Oh, I definitely work uh, harder when I'm with him. Hundred oh, yeah. percent. Everybody yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. You I gotta have that account. Yeah. I don't like doing all that shit. He's, at he's the gym. working really hard. He really is. Yeah. Now again, not for nothing. I know I've had very strong feelings about this. Sure. It is not from a shaming standpoint. No, I love it. It is a. You have my. You, I, I like I, I you. I love you and I respect <laughs> you. Yeah. And you're somebody when it comes to like, like you know, being an adult, sharp, smart guy, being confident, being in shape. 
being disciplined, I look up to you 100. Oh, percent So sweet. Yeah. Very nice. I mean, you just because you're taking just because you're cool advice. as shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll take I, that. I, I I get concerned for friends of mine. Thank you. Yeah, no, I also, I, yeah, I don't want to fucking drop dead of a heart attack and do that to anybody. If um, you do, do it on Patreon. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it live. I have the oh, right to last that, breath. <laughs> or see it live at the Red Bank Theater <laughs> August 11th. Um, but yeah, I'm doing all my doctor's appointments, all that kind of stuff, and, and, and trying to get a handle on it. I go to the GI doctor tomorrow. Nice. Oh, nice. I get the tubes checked. Yeah. Colonoscopy, endoscopy. Yep. Finger in the butt, the whole nine yards. Man, I did, I did an upper endoscopy one time, and it was at this Why? small... Uh, it was just like to check gut health and stuff. I hadn't uh, met uh, Athletic Greens yet. But, um, <laughs> Shout out to AG1, baby. Dude, I use it every time I go to, go to the gym, and yeah. I drink that instead of water throughout my workout, That's and like it, you feel better. It, yeah. Totally. And the, the gut health thing, tomorrow when I go to the GI doctor, I'm going to be like, listen, man, you know, my grandmother died of esophageal cancer. I've had acid reflux my whole life. I've been smoking. I've been this. I've been that. I want to get everything checked out, make sure I'm okay. And if I am okay, I want you to help me, guide me on how I can work on my gut health. Because I know that's a really big deal. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I did an upper endoscopy at a small doctor's office on the Upper East Side. Okay. It was so small that, you know, you rang a doorbell of a brownstone where Yikes. like the upper two or three floors were homes. You run into that in New York. The yeah. doctor's offices yeah. can be real fucking yeah. wonky. There's, a, yeah. there's, like there's a, a nice cat building. in there. Yeah. Like, what the, the fuck? The flex doctor's office. So, yeah. So I Man, went, I went in and it was just a guy and his like male helper and they knock you out. Yeah. And I'm like, so I'm like going under, and mm -hmm. then I wake up. I'm very woozy. You wake up on a couch, you yeah. know. <laughs> who knows? Underwear like, on backwards. Is on. Yeah. yeah, they like let me sit in the waiting room until I kind of gathered my wits, and then I went home. And I remember, like, kind of reflecting on it later that day and the next day, and being like, I have no idea. Yeah. If they did what they said they sure, were gonna huh? do, there was no one there. <laughs> to Oversee keep it. an eye yeah. i mean for all i know they fucking played tic-tac-toe with yeah. my dick for two hours Knocked you out put a pair of sunglasses on you yeah. and play weekend at bernie's <laughs> yeah. took a bunch of took you to the park i mean weeks, who dude. the hell knows yeah, yeah. True. it's not the last a great time feeling. i had when i had a really bad reaction it was probably 25 years ago i went and got a, uh an endoscopy done and they gave me demerol turns out i don't react too well to demerol i'm not mm. allergic to it i think i just might like it a little what is too it again? much is Demerol. that the thing that makes your, it's like the iodine thing? No, no, it's, a, it's the anesthesia that uses uh, the Yeah, Dude, I came out of it like Gary Busey, just mm. fucking wild. Isn't that what um, Michael Jackson was using to sleep every night? No, nah, it was, ultimately uh, that was, um, not, uh, it was something a little bit heavier. Oh. Yeah. Propofol. 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 Yeah. You guys know Ben DeMarco, right? Uh, like, yeah. He got put under for something back there. once. I like it. And his body didn't like, he's one of the rare cases where it didn't react properly to really? the thing. So he was just under. Uh, and he could hear everyone panicking. And they're like, Ben, we don't know what's wrong, but just we're going to try to figure it out. Fuck that. And he was like fully aware. Yeah. And then like three or four hours later, they figured it out and he snapped out of it. But like, scary shit. Something that I, I just yeah. had a, uh, an angiogram done. And what's they, that? Uh, where they, the where they, right? where they, I did like the, uh, the EKG, I did a nuclear stress test, but that's not a hundred percent. So it's like, we need to go in and just make, just make sure all the arteries are cool. And they go in with a little, a little thing through your arm and they actually see it, but they put you in what they call a twilight sleep. All right. So you're like kind of awake. You're kind of awake, but you're supposed to be, you're not supposed to know what's going on. They gave me fentanyl and I thought this shit was supposed to be strong. I had to tell this kid to fucking hit the gas a couple of times because I could feel this thing going up my arm. Uh, and I'm, I'm like, I'm like, yo, dude, fucking so hit, the, hit the fun you could, button. You could what, are say you saving that? this for the weekend? You could say yeah, that. Yeah, I was, I was aware enough to be, to be like, yo, dude, yeah. let's yeah. go. I one night, I one night, one Try time, a I was having surgery and they were putting me under and they were like, all right, I was supposed to have surgery on my left hand. And you go in, you're like all wonky already. Like when they're like, take when you get to the OR. So I'm like, I don't know what's going on. And they're cleaning this hand with like the iodine. They're sterilizing this hand, the wrong hand. Oh, God. And it doesn't register. I'm just like, I don't know. They know what they're fucking doing. And <laughs> then they're like, all right, you know, so we'll start counting back from like 100 or whatever. And you make, you typically make it like 10 seconds or something. And the guy's like, I remember getting to like 97 and the doctor's there. And he's like, why the fuck are you cleaning that hand? 
He goes, oh God. He goes, why, how, why is there an IV? How am I supposed to operate on this hand if there's an IV there? And then I was out. And I'm like, oh. Oh, my I God. I remember, like, my last second of consciousness was panic. Oh, my and God. And I woke up. I'm like, what the fuck happened? Woke I, like, up woke up in that moment. Fine. It was fine. Yeah, they, like, switched hands. Dude, but I was Jesus. like, holy shit. He wakes up. He's got double Scared Ds. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, I want to I wanna say something, which Please. is um, you guys, what you've done with your podcast, Are You Garbage? And if you're not familiar, because we have a probably a slightly different demographic listenership sure. than you guys, they have this brilliant Yours podcast. Yours would be more attractive, I would probably say. <laughs> Ours are more foley, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We love you. Um, are they, they, we sell out of 3X shirts on the road quite frequently. <laughs> <laughs> the, the premise of the of the podcast is is in the name. It's, it's are you a, a garbage person? Uh, like, do you... You know, maybe you fill in the Yeah, do you drink milk with dinner? What'd you get on your SATs? Yeah. Where'd you go on vacation? It's all like fun and lighthearted. It's celebrated. We're not like, yeah. it is shame, but as in like, welcome to the yeah. party a little yeah. bit. Like, Trying to find a commonality between yeah. people because we've learned it doesn't matter if you grew up rich, if you grew up poor, you could be, like if you grew up rich, you could have been garbage and then not garbage or the other way. Yeah. It's it's wild. Yeah. And Dina, I was Everybody one, has it in them. Yeah. I was one of the first guests. I early on, yeah. yeah. Um, Mid, early, very early pandemic. Because yeah, we pandemic. launched right when before you the pandemic. Started, yeah, we've both done it. Yeah. I, there's one question that really resonated with me that I will, my girlfriend and I joke about still. Well, and that it? is, have you ever been to a 4th of July party with no pool in the back? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough That's hang. a tough look, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Standing out there just sweating. Yeah. That's, that's a good one. No just good, out dude. there sweating that's with a, a paper one. plate of corn on the cob that's in your hand. One. Like, what have, the fuck? I, this killed me. This is one of the things I've realized, which is why I think it's such a brilliant podcast. I find myself coming up with these questions and that's what we didn't realize randomly yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and we'll ship them to me because we're I, running out i write them down <laughs> and i'm like yeah I'm, i want to save this for uh -huh. these guys and here's one that i've come up with and i you know I, you've done so many episodes that i always worry that maybe you've heard this question before but i want to pitch it to you guys sure, Let's do a little are you garbage on the podcast yeah i love it cool. have you ever used a woman's hair to floss your teeth. That's, I've somebody just thought about it. That. I've damn thought it. about it a lot. God I just remember that. Damn it. No, some, somebody. Or, no, I was talking. I thought to that a, was a really good one. I was talking. I mean, it is really good. That's insane. That, oh, some beautiful. A woman. I was it's like, beautiful. Recently, I was like, it's I perfect. had something in my it, teeth, yeah. and she pulled the hair out of her head and was like, "Here." And I was like, "What? Oh, wait, did she do it? As like a lot of people do this? <laughs> I she did yeah, it without we, even thinking that would be a problem. A lot like, of people do. You are not you someone are that I <laughs> would be in a book club. A lot with, of people do know? it because <laughs> I, I saw this couple outside of a show, and they were like, this just happened to us. We were at his sister's house, and I had something in my teeth." And she said, oh, here, use a piece of my hair. Yeah. At a house, that shouldn't be, you should be like, go to the, remove yourself yeah. from the bathroom, go, here's a toothpick, use a fork, a knife, and yeah. fucking figure it out. It would snap, too. The, use a fingernail like a gentleman. My problem, if you were walking in on, <laughs> if a, yeah, they, he does that, it's insane. If the key is you just don't pick it all the way off. That way you have a little handle. And just, there you go. Oh, there. God. Right behind the couch. <laughs> Very clever. Um, or I get some dental floss from upstairs, yeah. which I do floss every day. I know you floss everything. Nerd album. rope, but he does it. <laughs> uh, one of the one of the favorite ones that I've had that we just talked about this week, actually. Um, they they keep evolving, like stuff that we never think of. And then the thing is, like the the listeners write theirs in. Um, is would have you ever slept on the mattress that somebody died in? That's really good. <laughs> That's That's good. A, or would you? A That's lot of people good. do. Yeah. Like, yeah. I took my nana's mattress after she died of a heart attack. Right. I'm like, there's no fucking way I can right. ever do that. That's she hilarious. died in the in bed. the mattress. Yeah. Not like she died in a car accident or a bungee jump. Is that yeah. crazy? Would you ever fuck it? Are you nuts? I'd prefer not to. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah. All things considered, I would Just like to little, not sleep in that. A little soul leakage. That. Yeah. yeah. A little I mean, soul I, residue. Trying to pull your little root while you're in there. Your dead grandmother. You don't have to be religious or whatever, spiritual, but it's like there's something. A little oh, yeah. off about yeah, that. Pretty macabre. Yeah. yeah. One thing that's fun, uh, you guys. Okay, so we've known these guys forever. Mm -hmm. Um, probably at least close to a decade, if yeah. not a yeah. decade. I, I, that, I, us one two, of my favorite almost. times. One of my favorite meetings of anybody I was met, yeah, was so Julio. Good. I met him like <clears throat> literally on like a Wednesday. In New York, I had just moved to New York. I'm like, oh, fucking, what's up? How you doing? I think Ian introduced us. Ian okay, Finance, yes. and then. 
We go down and we end up being in the same. This like Ponzi scheme comedy festival. Comedy festival. It was, down it was rigged. Cape May. It was rigged. It was rigged. It was so bad. It was horrible. <laughs> it was actually rigged. But he shows up. He thinks like down the shore. Now it's in like a convention hall or something. It's in a room that holds a thousand people. There's about twelve people there. And he rolls in in a bathing suit and flip flops. <laughs> he thought we were performing on the beach. So he's like, I thought it was a bit. Like, I thought he was like, oh, like, I'm really going to get the, some extra laughs. I'm the Sandy comic, dude. Yeah, he might as well showed up with, like, the fucking ink zinc yeah. on his nose and shit. Walking, <laughs> smelling like coconut. I was, dude, I was immediately eliminated. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. Dude, I didn't get past the first did round. Did you your set shirtless? No, but I had a bathing suit and flip flops on. Yeah. Wow. In a dude, we were out. So then I'm like, <laughs> I see him out front and we're smoking and I'm like, hey, what's up, man? Why just, you know, he's like, oh, shit, what are you doing? I'm like, what's, I remember being like, what's going on with this? I'm in like jeans. I have a jean jacket on. Like, I got like a knitted cap and he, I'm like, what's this all about? And he's like, I thought we were on the beach, bro. I just, I was just fucking. Yeah. It's 2013. Not for nothing. It's the middle of, middle of 14. 14. It's you the middle went of February. Full denim tuxedo with a knitted hat. Canadian I mean, tux. let's not gloss over that. That's, yeah. No <laughs> yeah nice I don't know that that's the right outfit to his wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Very Very true. true. Fucking so, Spicoli and Johnny Cash. He might as well yeah. shut up with a boogie board and be like, <laughs> let's fucking rip, dude. You didn't live in the city yet, in New York yet. I just moved. It was you that my first moved. week. So okay. it, was, it was probably like June or July of uh, 2014 because okay. I just moved up. And you lived here already? For a couple months. I believe, yeah, me and Reggie Conquest and I moved up the same day. Okay. We moved up on uh, January 1st of 2013. And they were part of this like crew of people where like you couldn't tell if they lived here yet because they were here so yeah. often. Yeah. Well, a lot of the <laughs> guys were coming back and forth for a long time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's funny when, when you are hanging out with people and it's early on, there's really no way to predict how things are going to go. Of course. Because if you were to ask me what specifically are either of these two going to be doing mm -hmm. in 10 years, I would yeah. have been like, as time Doc went work? on. work? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I Rick Lane? I would have predicted... First, I would have gone, oh, man, I don't know. I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I would have said, I would have predicted. I mean, at that point, I was the fat one. Or I think I was bigger than you at that point. When we yeah, met, you probably. were both big boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you, I would have predicted that Kevin, based on the trajectory, would have ended up becoming this, like, famous German comedian. Because <laughs> oh, of how yeah. often he was yeah, performing yeah, in Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a lot. And he had the whole circuit figured out. You and were I was performing like, in German? My wife's from Germany. Yeah. You speak fluent German? Oh, no. You guys perform in English. <laughs> like expat, whatever. Oh, yeah. They all speak oh, English. Oh, they all speak oh, Dude, oh, the right. second anybody lands in Germany, you're the funniest comedian in no, Germany. No, but I didn't realize it's you like... were going over there and performing in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, that's what I would predict sure. for you. And if this didn't pop, I would be in fucking in Germany, Germany right now playing it. Dusseldorf. And you were whatever. talking about And you were talking. You, you just like knew so much about it. I was like. This guy's gone. He's going to be crushing it over there. Great. Good for him. And Foley. A lot of traffic on the Haas and Frau Avenue. Am I right? <laughs> and Foley, I would have just expected you to become like, I, I you know, and, and you guys are both obviously great, great comedians, but like, you know, also it's like, how do you end up making money? It's not always from like touring or whatever. Sure, yeah, yeah. So I would have expected you would have become a great character actor, yeah. which you were great, all, like, which you were already sort of on the you were, path yeah, to yeah, doing. Yeah, you were doing. Yeah. We you were, were always working. talking about acting. Hundred percent. You were, you know, you, there's some guys you hang with, and they. They want to check the pulse of the street. This is full. He'd be like, so what's what's going on with your manager? How, how do you talk to this guy? <laughs> I always I swear love God, running my into guy's him. not hasn't called me back in weeks. I so. always love running into you. I ask you what yeah. life's like in the fast lane. We yeah. talk yeah. about shit. Yeah. shit. So if you, you know, and here they are. You with and Ricky zipping podcast. around, smoking doobies, hanging out. The cool <laughs> kids. I loved it. So, you know, these are oh, pa parallel avenues that you guys could have taken. They could have led you sure. to a ton of success also. Of but like you end up coming up with this great podcast. And it was one of those podcasts that just started ripping right away. Yeah. It's we had wild. done we had done two. This every, is our third when we got here. We, together. Start, we started. We've been moment. podcasting for a decade together. Yeah. That's why I think we're good at it. Interesting. Because we developed I mean, we did it when nobody was listening. When 150, 200 people were listening. Yeah. Uh we've, you know, learned how to work that muscle and, mm -hmm. you know, each other's rhythms so and stuff. This cool. is and we're trash. Fascinating. <laughs> um because you guys entered with, with Are You Garbage, a very saturated podcast hosts by, hosted by comedians of market, course. right? And you didn't leverage, sorry to interrupt, you didn't leverage like an existing No, no following. fan base. No, no. Fan base. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they, yeah. you guys... Started from zero. Not to be, relative, no disrespect, you started from scratch. Oh, 100%. Yes. And, yeah, 100%. and what is so remarkable At the beginning me, of the worst global disaster. Yeah. Yeah. We had two in the can and then launched and then the world shut down. The, yeah, the... Wow. 
Um, Us and the roaches, baby. You, <laughs> you guys came in and at a time when it was very kind of in vogue for people to say things like, oh, you launched a, what do you, oh, you started a podcast. How how novel of an idea. Sure. Like, what I mean, Jared Fried said it best. We had him on, he was our second guest and went before, the, like, the, it was the week of the pandemic and he was like, we were like, hey guys, check us out on Facebook. Like, we were doing the plugs and he goes, this is like an SNL sketch of two guys launching a podcast. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that's exactly what you guys just did. But that's And good. he wasn't wrong. You I, know I, mean? I, I, you know, look, not nothing of nothing this is not about jared but i've noticed that a lot of people that have sort of successful podcasts mm -hmm. make fun of people of who start new podcasts of course yeah yeah, yeah. and i don't <laughs> that's, really that's such a fucked up i don't really idea, get it the whole idea i don't really get it up. it's like there's plenty you know they're either gonna sink or swim it's not it's not gonna take any share of your pie um and you guys are proof that there is room of course, for more of course. and that you can be successful regardless of when you start, regardless of how many people have tried before you. Mm -hmm. Weight, um, age, hair follicles, doesn't yeah, matter. None of that matters. It, it is, it is, a, uh, it is a, 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 I don't know, a, a total discrediting of people who shit on people, on, especially comedians, for starting podcasts. Almost as like, uh, well, everyone's done it, so I have to. Mm -hmm. Sure, but I think, and the, you know, not to a get, lot of people do do it just because they think yeah, they have to. Not to get that's true, and that's not you guys. Yeah, yeah, no, you but guys we, had a brilliant idea. Well, we made a dis I made, I mean, I made a decision to not. I was just like, I can't. I was literally I was like. Also, we had no other fucking lifelines. Yeah, like we had, we had to the back of nothing. Our head. So it was like this has to. How the fuck do we figure this Stimulus out? Stimulus right. check and a dream, baby. So then, yeah. like when the pandemic hit, I was just like, this isn't going to fail again. Like, I'm like, we cannot fail again. We just can't do it. Like many... I just can't fucking have another. This will be our like ninth failed project. So we just started doing two every week during the pandemic, and every day we did a hard feelings, which is a just podcast like, uh, that we now do behind uh, our paywall. paywall on the Patreon. Um, where it's just me and him shitting on each other. So we just did it every <laughs> single day. Uh. People were available. You know, Schultz was around. Gillis was around. All these people were around. And they were really sweet and, you know. And the idea up. is also different. You know what I mean? It's not just yeah. like, how'd you get started? That yeah. really, you know, yep. whatever. What uh, It's fun. Yeah, when, who would ask that hair question on, on a regular right. podcast? Right, right. What, um, when, when you, you've mostly had comedians sure. as mm -hmm. guests. And you've probably gone around the track a couple of times with certain guests. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's not that huge of a community, especially since you're you want better, higher, you have to known keep going. people. Yeah, of course. Is your plan to go farther down the talent pool, or will you expand in terms of your guests into? Hey. Authors, musicians, whatever. So this that would be ideal. Yeah, yeah. that's what. That's what Imagine we getting do. Obama on Are You Garbage? That'd yeah, be amazing. It's no. <laughs> like it would that's be so funny. The, not the idea. I mean, oh, like a girl's hair. What are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> but it also, was, too. Sorry. sorry. We we we've we you know as you guys know you're a part of the universe. We've created this universe where it's fun to bring people back. Like there's yeah. no there, you know it's it's evergreen. So it's like we do you know when you sign up for Patreon you get a question asked on what we call our family episodes that go out publicly. You know what I mean? When we have you back, we have you back. And it's a family episode. We got a little company in the building. And that's down fueled here off listener questions. So we goof around a little bit in the beginning, and then the listener questions come in and get directed towards the guest. So it, 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 it just good. keeps going. But 100%, we want to get to, um, you know, we had Chaz Palminteri on. There's, there, there's well, a couple, amazing. A couple yeah. athletes that we'd like to have on. Um, but it's also like this is like a now problem where we're, it's growing quicker than we had. I mean, like we just had Tom Segura on and Bert within the past. Gaffigan. Like, Gaffigan. Then th and they're reaching out to us, so we we're like, "What?" That's like sick. I was like, "Oh, we'll get them in two years, and then we'll have to shift and figure stuff out." But now yeah. it's like, uh, we're kind of already getting to the top right. of like we're gonna have to start, you know, sick. navigating around other. Uh, but I would love to have yeah athletes. Fucking, I think there'd be a lot of really good actors that would be good on it and stuff. Paul like Rudd. That. I want to have Paul Rudd. Yeah, yeah I was Dave say, Grohl. Pie in the sky, dream guest for you. Who is it? Uh, I think Tony Hawk would be. That's really, cool. That's yeah. a good, good answer. What about you? Holy. Putin would be fun. You know, <laughs> 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 he wouldn't be so bad. No, uh, Dave Grohl, Paul Rudd. In my head, I always thought Paul Rudd. Like that's 
That's where I wanted us to get there. Like uh-huh. Hot Ones esque, how they have like yeah. you yeah. know, not like they'll they will have like really big people on, but also like kind of mm-hmm. and also too comedians or whatever. You well. know, it's mm-hmm. it's not it's like now we'd want them for their for their star power. We want them because we think they're interesting. Uh, there's a lot of character actors out there like Stephen Root. I would love to oh, have. He's great. He yeah. would be so great. Um, yeah, just you know, any anybody anybody interesting, we'd love to have. Nice. That's awesome. That's kind of a stupid answer. <laughs> just no, no. Anybody <laughs> cool. Do you know anybody? That's great. That's great. And do you, you kind of answered this, but in terms of just keeping it fresh, do you find that the premise of the show is broad enough that it does not limit you guys? Or... No, because we're, you know, we're, we're evolving as the show is evolving. Um, and you know, as long as we're living our lives, it it you know, it's an endless supply. Sure. So this like, happens, yeah. that happens. Like my mom just got caught up in a phishing scam. Mm. So that we opened Tuna. up, we opened up, <laughs> we opened up a you know the show about that. You ever get caught up in this? It just it just keeps it's going. A, yeah. It's yeah. also like we started out as such, and we are still bozos, but like such, no, like nobodies. You know what I mean? Like the the show is more successful than we are as right. individuals. Um. That like the growth we have and now people are seeing us make money, like they've become fans of us rather than the yeah. show. Yes. So there's Which like there's great. episodes where Which we just want. do with me and him where people are like, those are my favorite fucking episodes. The guests just get in the way. Yeah. Others tune in of like, oh, I just love when they have big guests on or mm-hmm. whoever. Yeah. So there is like different shows within the show of that why people tune in. Right. Mm-hmm. But like as you were saying, I mean like and we've also kind of made a a pact, not a pact, but like let's Try to have as much fun with the money as we can. Mm. Like lottery winners. Like we don't deserve to be fucking. Right. We don't deserve to be wealthy. So we're like, we did a $10,000. I, was, I wanted to ask you about that. Sure. Chris, how, where are we at right now? Perfect. Okay. So I, so I saw this and I was like, this is one of the most brilliant things I've ever seen to get people to subscribe to a Patreon. <laughs> so they were going to put 10 grand each on red or black at the roulette table. They got Akash Singh involved. Yeah. Who has done, he's done the pod before, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and Shout out to Akash. In, in order to see the result, you needed to subscribe to the page. Sure. Yeah. Did you see a huge uptick in oh, subscribers? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah Massive? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Um, we didn't, you know. So funny. Uh, it's not like a sales or marketing ploy or anything like that. You it know, is like, clever. In a, in it, a, in like that stuff is for, we were lucky to have a, a very large, loyal Patreon fan base. Yeah. Yes. Um, so that we do that for them, yeah. really. Like we're like you, join, we we hit a certain number, yeah. like four thousand patrons or whatever it is. We're like, this is for you guys. Like you guys get a ten minute sketch or not sketch, a ten minute video of us being idiots or whatever, mm-hmm. whatever the promise we made is. Yeah. Um. So it's really for them, and then we're like, all right, well, we have this ten minute video. We just, you know, our producers like, I'll just make a fucking thirty second teaser, and if people want to join, they, you know, yeah. they can join. But it's really, it is really for the people that are already. It's there. a good time over there on that Patreon. I'll tell you. Yeah, that. we have fun. It's fun. But that's it's kind good. of our 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 motto is to like, blow not blow it, but like you know, yeah, conserve it. Have it a have be, a lot of fun with it. It would be so <laughs> at odds with everything you've built if the money you were making you were putting into like, like a Roth IRA. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That would well, just I, be... I just actually uh, I got some investment properties uh, down. They were blowing all the money. <laughs> <laughs> I took a jet ski here and then threw it back into the river. Can yeah. we ask? And maybe you can't reveal. Sure. If your bet hit. Uh, it's a, it's a public at this point that we lost. <laughs> yeah. All of you lost it, right? Well, so I'd be wearing a solid gold suit if I won 10 <laughs> yeah. G's. What are you nuts? Yeah. yeah, we lost. Uh, it was really a, a long, Akash, fucked, Akash it fucked us up really bad. He ruined all the fucking mojo. We got down there. He didn't have the money. He couldn't get the money. We had to lend him the money, but like I was already maxed out on my credit cards and everything like my debit cards for the day. Cause we had taken out our share. We took it out in the city. He got to go to two banks to get it out. That's how fucking trash I had to take it out of my are. personal and the business. That's how Bless unliquid you. we are with Bless money. you. But um, he showed up, and he's a rich guy, so we're thinking he knows what he's doing. He's like, I'll get it when we get down there. Like, that ah, makes sense to me. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. I don't know. You know? I've That's never cool. gone to a casino. You know, I've never gone to a casino and take it out of $10,000, but... Yeah, I thought he was going to get in the car with, like, a gold bar or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, kid's got cash on him. So we get down there and he's got a thousand dollar limit on cash advances on his credit card. 
So he's fucking down there. I, I got he's the, literally I on got the phone the suit with on. Chase, and he's handing the he's handing the phone to the cashier at the fucking <laughs> where Bailey's or whatever. Yeah, and they're ball, like, "Guys, are million there. Yeah, it's pretty ball garbage." Move. I'm like, yeah. "You know, you're in a bad spot. Like, yeah. neither one of these people in this conversation give a fuck about yeah. the other person. He's got a golf pencil in his hand, trying to write down account <laughs> numbers and stuff. Walking around a casino, wire like, it to uh, receipts and the phone in his hand. So it just kind of put the yeah. Put it the took like 45 on. minutes for him to get the money. And then we he was only able to get five thousand, so we each put up five thousand, uh, and we lost in like seconds. But he it took them. <laughs> it took them fifteen minutes to count the money at the table, and uh, they counted the money. It was gone in four and a half seconds. You spun oh, it thirty god. red. You had it on. You had it on black. We yeah. put it all on black. Yeah, and it hit red. It hit red. Oh yeah. my god! We were in Applebee's ten minutes later. Did it hurt? Uh, yeah, well, in the yes, it would have been a lot cooler. If yeah, we oh, it yeah. sucked. It was just like a. I mean, the ride down was like we were bumping Meek Mill, everybody screaming. Oh, yeah. The ride home, it was raining. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was uh, just not fun. Yeah, <laughs> gotta remember it's tax season too. We were yeah. fucking yeah. burning Damn, both, bro. burning the candle at both ends. Well, can you not write that loss off? I don't. I you tell me. I don't think you can. I don't like think you can. Content. I don't think you can wait. Off. I don't think you can write off. It is content, but I don't think you're allowed to write off wagers. There's certainly a case to be made that that I, was, of course. That was yeah. work. And my, I would and, try. and trust me, at the end of this year, my accountant will be making that. What were you going to do if you weren't a comedian? Would you have been a lawyer? I. What did um, you actually go to school for? I was. Uh, I had. I had dreams of being in the in the foreign service, joining the CIA. True story. Oh, I remember. We talked about yeah. that on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, I'm I didn't, chubbing up over here. I didn't know. <laughs> Is this kid the real deal <laughs> For or what? sure. Also, that's a class. You just call it the foreign story. I didn't know what that was. Well, they clarified CIA. That's real OSS kind but of that, shit. That but. can include NSA and some of the sure. other kind of, uh, you know, foreign geopolitical mm -hmm. sort of uh, clandestine things. You went to Harvard or Yale? Harvard. Uh, but my, my grandfather... Went to Yale mm -hmm. and was in Skull and Bones and then was a very early person in the CIA. Get the fuck out and of he here. he met my grandmother in the CIA. They were was he there. in the OSS? It was in World War II? Uh, no. It would have been probably closer to like Korean War. Really? But they were in, uh, in they met in Indonesia. They, they were. Met, I was going to say, they met in Rhodesia. Hotel <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. yeah. Rwanda. Met at a Walmart in Tennessee. Yeah. It was and then weird. their <laughs> covers were blown. And so they had to retire. Wait, why were their covers? Their I still blown? don't really know exactly why that happened. I is don't he, know. Is he still with us? Or he passed uh, away? No, he recently passed away this oh, year. Or yeah. did he? Yeah. yeah. When it just disappeared, went into the wind. Did you ever see The Good Shepherd with Matt Damon? I, I've seen it a few times. It. and it's I've seen it about 15 times. So confusing, but Woo! such a great movie. Fucking yeah. so good. Yeah, it's really it's good. Remember that scene with him and Pesci? What do you people have? United States of America, you're all just visiting. Yeah. Damn. That's good. Yeah. That's some waspy shit right there. Yeah. Yeah. It's the yeah. I love all that stuff. Yeah, no. I mean, I was fascinated with the the Arab world and I was I You would have got busted in two seconds. You look like Captain America walking. I around. wouldn't have necessarily been over there. I wouldn't have necessarily been like in the field, you know. Okay. But An analyst. I, like maybe Jack Ryan. like Langley or something. I I, I don't know. Listen, Dang I never got that far down the Langley. road. Look at this He's guy. not. We're doing a podcast. This is a podcast <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. Ah, you would have been a fucking great great agent um i don't think the cia thought that <laughs> yeah well i, I applied yeah no I and ne oh really never heard back from him what but then again it's like i didn't really check like the painting behind the fireplace for the sure invitation the so yeah. i don't know if i just missed the <laughs> yeah. interview date and time or in the good shepherd the way they, they started they wanted to recruit him is because he walked by a hat and didn't look at it remember alec baldwin he's like he's like Nine out of ten people would have looked at that hat when oh, they yeah. walked by it. You're a very focused young man. Oh, interesting. He was great in that. Day. Yeah, he yeah, he was. was. God damn, that's a good one. So movie. was De Niro. It was really good. Ooh. It's a hot one. So um, was William Hurt. God rest his soul. R.I.P. Ooh. Yeah. Good flick. So, yeah, that was, I don't know, something. something. And then I what, did go to law school for four days. Hey, you finished in four days. That moved quick. to New York. <laughs> wow, this guy really this is a go-getter. Go -getter, huh? <laughs> the CIA missed out, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, moved to New York, did stand up, was doing open mics for two years. It really felt like it was just a, a dead end. It was pretty gloomy. Uh, felt like what I'd, year was that? What did you, you said you moved to New York City? You were doing, 2011. You were doing open mics here in 2011. Yeah, I used to go to the, the little West 11th Cafe, uh -huh. Alex Barnett. I did that one. Those guys. I, was, I would go to, there was like a comedy club on the Lower East Side called, I think it was called like the Comedy 
Zone or Lounge. Laugh Lounge. Lounge? Oh, 2011. Laugh we weren't even fucking here yet. Laugh Lounge. Jesus. Yeah. That's and in Rivington. <clears throat> you, you were here in 2011? Yep. Yeah. I just, just, I mean, it was so bad. And and did it for, I mean, doing improv and all that stuff with Big Wet. I know. Who I know. opened that Pete Davidson right, and Friends yeah, yeah, special, yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Uh, singer. Huh. And then, uh, yeah, I just was like, ah, oh, this isn't going to happen. I've tried. I, you know, I thought I had tried two years. Of course. And uh, was like, all right, got to get my life together. Uh, applied Rush to law to school. Flip you? <laughs> <laughs> got a, went to work at the district attorney's office as a paralegal. You did? You worked at the DA's you know. office? Yeah, I got my, got my Man, you know, all right. candidacy in good shape for law school and uh, go, went to Fordham for four days and uh, was like, oh, man, this is not. Huh. I'm not ready for this. This isn't what I want. Politics, With, you would have been good. Withdrew and uh, did stand up for another five years and was tutoring, which I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And then finally got the job at Barstool. Hmm. Interesting. Rest is history. Wild and the kid world, was hot baby. on the court. I yeah. was out there giving lessons, you know, doing the whole thing. We all do what we can to just stay in yeah. it. Of Keep course. It until something happens. Something, works something out. hits. Yeah, 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 of course. Now it's all working out, right, boys? Let's go. The boys. Right, so, yeah, the boys. Right, that's a good, that's probably a good time to close it out. We, uh, Ryan, do you have anything to Ryan's our here? fact checker. Okay. Ryan's fact is our Everyone fact Everyone told the truth. I mean, I, I, you should <laughs> have told Any me. more drugs you want to tell us about, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, guys, if you'd like to plug your Red Bank gig again, please. August 11th, <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be in Red Bank, New Jersey at the Count Basie Theater, small theater, and then... Um, the Middle Class Famous Tour uh, kicks back up. We're going to be in Portland. We're going to be in Seattle. We're going to be all over the place. Sick. All the all the dates, everything is uh, in our little link tree things and all of our sure. social media. Cool. And and are you garbage? Check out are you garbage guys? And Give their time. Bought a list and the we boys are both on there. Plug yeah. your individual Instagrams too. Uh, at H Foley Comedy Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, at Kevin Ryan Comedy on all social media. Which they just made me change because mine was two different things. I don't understand that social media. They've made you change. We made him change. Our producer I see. advised him it. because we put up the handles. He has like seven handles. Yeah. And none of them are. It's all like H Foley on ice. <laughs> Foley grams. Oh, yeah. You I know. remember Foley grams. Hank at fucking LinkedIn or whatever. It's just like, dude, pick one and stick with I'm it. I'm getting on that TikTok next. Those kids are, kids are moving over there. It'll work. Those kids are moving. Picks. Buddies, thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks. Our, Our the best. pleasure. Uh, G, anything? Yeah, Tampa. Uh, I'm in Wesley Chapel, Florida tonight. Um, at the at Side Splitters, come check it out. I'm here all weekend. Francis, what about you? Yeah, I've got Arlington Draft House, Ooh, July twenty third, nice. second, twenty third. I've got St. Louis Helium, July twenty eighth to the thirtieth. Very nice. And then I've got, I think it's the same theater they're playing there you in go. Red Bank, New Jersey, Sick. with Lil Sass, be, yeah. Yeah. August tenth. Uh, so come check that out, FrancisEllis.com. What a pleasure, guys. Thank you. So Thank much you so fun. much. Thank you for having us. Much love. Yeah. It. Love you, brother. Very proud of you love guys. You, brother. Thank love you. Yeah. Proud of you guys as well. Awesome. Thank you. See you guys. Peace.